scientist that we have with us is Professor Arnab Mukherjee and he is a professor in the department of chemistry and data science. So we are ready right? Yes. Let us welcome him. Hello everybody. So first I will give my introduction. So I am a faculty at chemistry department here. So you know that uh, at which standard are you in right now? Some of you 7, 8, 9, 11 anybody from 11, 12 okay great. So soon you are going to give exams uh, different competitive exams even a ISER exam also you are going to give right some of you would like to join ISER for uh, doing science later. If you do then you will uh, then I, I probably will teach you okay in the first year or second year or later part. Now what do I teach? See I am a chemistry teacher. So what do you think about chemistry? What is what does chemistry mean to you? Mixing things in a beaker, colorful solutions right and sometimes there will be some explosions and things like that right that is what you think about chemistry. But actually chemistry has lot of different aspects. So there is chemistry everywhere, there is chemistry in the sky in the in the interstitial spaces, there is chemistry in our body, there are lot of chemical reactions all the time going on here right. There are reactions chemical reactions for which we can see you, you know our eyes can detect because of chemical reactions. We have metabolism like food that we take that get digested because of chemical reaction and the fact that I am moving, talking and all that those are also chemical reactions. So chemistry has many many other things than normally what you do in the beaker okay that is the first thing. But then what I am going to talk about today is even above that I am going to talk about entropy. So how many of you heard about entropy? 11 standard right more or less correct okay. So why I say enigmatic entropy because many many people have confusions about that entropy. See right now since you are starting you do not know about entropy after this talk you will have no confusion. But let us say if you did not come to this talk you probably would have had that confusion right. So that is why this enigmatic term has come in fact there is a book that is called enigmatic entropy written by a great scientist. What is that I am going to come later but first I want to show you a video. This is a video probably some of you have seen already. This only shows how small we are okay. You see a person slowly you know is zooming out you know the universe is so big that the light takes almost billions of years to travel from one part to another part it is such a big one and our typical size is you know in centimeter or meters right. So why I am going to show you this universe because I am going to talk about universe in my chemistry lecture okay. Now all that you see like table, chairs, you know stars or galaxies or water or all that they are made of atoms and molecules right. You know what is atom and what is molecule okay. So they are made of atoms and molecules but long time ago there were no atoms and no molecules also there right long time ago not, not today. But let us say if we take ourselves billions of years ago 13.7 billion year ago our universe got created that time. So that time the universe was very tiny, tiny even you can say smaller than my finger. So what was there? There was only energy nothing else and that is that is what you call as big bang that is the beginning of our universe and from that time onwards the time starts basically and universe expands with time and first it forms hydrogen atom then it combines from helium atom and then many many other atoms then stars galaxies all that and then you know earth got created human beings got created with plants and all. So this is how we have come to this particular stage now we are looking back to understand that what is the driving force why it happened that way. 
why universe got created and why the things the way they are. So for example, you will see there are only two important things that you have to know. One is energy and another is entropy. Energy all of you know, right? So if you did not have lunch today, you will have no energy, right? No energy to lift your bag, no energy to go to school, right? So energy typically means this. See that guy definitely had energy, right? Otherwise lifting that thing is difficult and then running with that, imagine. So more energy you have, more work you can do. Energy is our ability to carry out work, right? I cannot ask a small tiny robot to lift a big, you know, thing, right? I can have a crane to lift that and then, okay, so uh, I have, I can, I need a big crane to lift some, you know, heavy objects and all. So more energy you require to do more work or sometimes also you can produce heat that I will come to that later on. But even in our tiny, you know, our body itself, there are machines like Bahubali. This is like really a Bahubali, right? Is you see that how big load it is carrying and how it is carrying that load, where the energy is coming from? It is coming from the food that you eat. When you eat food, that is a chemical that gets converted to something called ATP. I do not know whether you know about that or not. Just think about that it gets stored somewhere and that energy is used by this machine to work. Okay. So now, so what we see here is that, that there are different types of energy. We can say thermal energy, electrical energy, see we use battery, right? That, that is one kind of energy and then there is nuclear energy, you know, nuclear explosions, bombs, you know, that happens. We have chemical energy. So for example, in a match stick, when you light it, we have chemical energy. So mechanical energy, when you run a car, you run a car because of the petrol. Petrol is chemical. So the chemical energy that is there in petrol is get converted to mechanical energy in the motion of the car. So energy can neither be created nor destroyed. What does it mean? That means that let us say I have a toy which does not break at all or you have a toy which does not break at all. All that happens is that it goes from you to somebody else or maybe you to your sister or brother and then again another person. The toy remains the toy, but it gets changed the hands. It goes from one hand to another hand. Now, if energy is the toy, then the process of you know going from one to another person is the entropy. So they are kind of two sides of the same thing. Okay. So as I said, energy of the universe is fixed. Now I showed you what the universe is with all the billions of galaxies and you know stars and all that, whatever the energy was there long, long back during the time of the creation of universe, that energy has remained the same. It has not changed. It has not increased, neither it has decreased. But that universe what was there earlier, it is no longer the same now. So that means there is a change. How did the change happen? There is a reason for the change, right? Lot of things happen. We, you see the trees grow and then it wither away, flowers bloom, they fall. You see the waterfall from the top, it comes down. If I drop a ball, it will go down and you know, it will bounce back few times and stop. You see, these are all changes that you see. You see a building today, very new. It gets old later on or even your clothes, which are very new when you buy it, it gets older in a year, right? So things change with time. We see rusting that happens in normal metals and all. All that thing, you know why it happens? Why it happens that way? Why not an old thing becomes new? Why not water goes from bottom to the top? Okay, so that is what we are going to talk about. So for example, you see these are examples of conversion of energy. I eat pizza, I can run. Or if I have a battery driven car, that battery will fuel the car and I, I can move the car or I can use electricity to run a computer or, or, or a bulb. So when I switch on this bulb, so electrical energy gets converted to light energy. So that already I talked about the conversion of energy. 
Similarly, there is a conversion of matter also. For example, when you take the sunlight, carbon dioxide and water makes glucose, right? You know about photo photosynthesis, right? At some point, you have studied photosynthesis. The trees create food for us basically from the sunlight and then that food is used in our body to create energy which is ATP. So that conversion always happens, right? Similarly, we know that there are different phases of water. The, what are the three phases? Ice, water and vapor that also keeps on changing. Now, my point is that all these changes is only allowed. See, they do not they don't change just like that. It is only allowed if entropy increases. So there is a term called entropy if you do not know that. There is a term called entropy that acts like a gatekeeper. You have seen the security of a building, right? When you enter, the security will ask you if you are you know legitimate person, then only they will allow you inside, right? But sometimes security can also take some money or something and you will allow you, okay? Now entropy is like that gatekeeper. It asks some you know remuneration, something from the change. Well, only if the entropy increases, then only change will happen. Otherwise, it will not happen. That is the bottom line. That is how all the changes happen, which means that from the beginning of our universe till today, entropy kept on increasing. Because if it does not increase, change will not happen. I will give you example for that. First example I will give you is this example. So, you will see the experiment. So, this is an experiment that is done probably here and video recorded in our science activity center. So, you see what is going to happen. Candle is lit. Now, can you guess what is going to happen now? Now, now can you guess what is going to happen? But before that, what is going to happen? Before that, what is going to happen? Exactly, heat is going to transfer from here to here. Now, have you asked this question to yourself? Why heat is transferring from here to here and not from here to here? This candle is glowing. It, the heat is going from here to here, but this, this also has some heat. This is also not cold, right? This is also heat is there. Why it is not going from this side to this side? See, when you touch a hot object, you feel hot, right? That means heat is going from that object to you. Why it is not other way down? Why it is not going from you to the cup? Why heat always goes from high temperature to low temperature? See, if you touch ice, what happens? Heat goes from, yes, he, ice melts. Why? Because heat gets transferred from your hand to the ice. But from ice, it does not come to our hand. Have you th thought about that? Have you thought about that? Why it does not happen other way around? No? Because it is quite natural to see, right, that heat transfers. So the reason that heat transfers from high temperature to low temperature because it increases entropy. Okay, that is the reason it is allowed. The other other way it is not allowed because it will decrease the entropy. I will give you one more example. Now, let us say I have a glass and I drop one ink. What is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen now? The ink is dropped in the water. What is going to happen? Exactly color will change. How? Why the color is changing? Very nice because ink will mix. Simple, ink will mix with water. Correct? Now, if I ask you why ink is not unmixing, that means from this mixed one, why ink is not coming together in the corner by itself? This happens. Correct? You have seen it. Have you seen the opposite happen? Ever in your dream? No? I will show you today that it happens sometimes. Okay? But after some time, hold on. So that means this is quite natural. And why it happens all the time? Because again, because entropy increases. There is no other reason. Now I will show you very nice animation. 
you see this is a box and the left hand side of the box there are a lot of particles are there which are moving imagine those particles are our gas particles which you cannot see but they are there all the time moving around so now there is a partition in between i put some particles on the left hand side of the box okay now what is going to happen is that these particles are uh, moving around right now there is a boundary i'll put more particles then it will be easy you see there is a boundary in between if i remove the boundary what do you think is going to happen particle will go all over the box 100% correct but why do you think it will happen that way yes but correct but why it will spread all over that is the question very high so it will go to low concentration why it will go to low concentration so now i remove the barrier and as you predicted as you predicted because this is what we naturally observe right this is uh, this happens all around us if i remove it it's like you know now right now we are confining you all here in this room if i open the door or make a ganti and say okay chutti what is going to happen you'll just go out right which means suddenly entropy will increase because now you will have all the other campus for you to move around not just this tiny small room and that's what happens to those particles they were confined to only a part of the box once i allow them they move around and they go go all across and that is mainly because or or only because primarily because because there are maybe other reasons but primarily because entropy increases now imagine one more thing i i bring the center of mass you know what is center of mass that means all particles mean position you see where that is in the middle of the box which means half the particle are on this side and half the particle are on that side you know why the, the, why not one third on left hand side and two third on the right hand side equal equal divided equally equally so you all go for equal right equal rights equal things when you have two biscuits you know you should share equally among two people correct two biscuits four people half half always equal for the same reason half the particle go here half the particle go here because that increases the entropy to maximum if you don't do anything if you do any other things it will increase but not to the maximum so entropy will always try to maximize another thing i can show you is that i can reset it yeah so i will do one thing In left hand side i will put uh blue particle and right hand side i put red particle now if i remove the divider you know what is going to happen they going to mix just like i show mixing question is can they ever unmix can you unmix them meaning put the blue there and red there ha huh? can you do that by using fantastic meaning i am asking them can you unmix let's say i give you uh, marbles blue ones and red ones you mix it in a jar can you take it uh, unmix it one by one you have to do na it will take some time right so which means you can reduce entropy but you have to do work for that if you don't do any work spontaneously to increase but if you work then it can be decreased correct okay so now that you understand that oh this is uh, not the power point okay so you see another example the ball once you drop it 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 bounces to not the same height little bit lower second time even lower third time even lower fourth time even lower and then finally it will be on the ground have you seen the ball starting from the ground and coming up because that will reduce the entropy this increases the entropy and how it increases that is slightly advanced 
uh, only for 11, 12 standard students maybe. Once the ball drops, the energy gets transferred to the floor. The floor particle now have that energy and they will transfer another particles connected to the floor and then it will just dissipate and the ball will have lower energy to come up. Second time hits, again float particle will get that energy from the ball and dissipate. It is like, it is like when you uh, take a, uh, you know in a holy when you play a holy and mix it right, after that after mixing it if you put in, in a drum, it will get all mixed, can you get, get the color back? Because the entropy has increased, you cannot decrease it. You, you can but you have to do a lot of work and that work is not simple picking up, you need many other techniques also. So now, this example is very easy, I, I think you know you will all know, I will just show you quickly because it is connected to the rest of that. So this example we observe that there is a balloon, we are holding it, we leave it, spontaneously the air will go out, correct? Then I told you that I will show you the opposite process, right? You see the opposite process, unmixing happening. See, you have not observed it before, no? So I am showing you. How did I get it? Any idea? So you know for a fact that this is, has been reversed. I have taken a movie and I am running the movie backward. You know that. You know why you know that? Because it reduces entropy. That is why anything reduces entropy cannot happen. And if it cannot happen, then you will not believe it. Then you know that it has been reversed. So that means, I will come to that meaning later. Okay, again this is the same thing. Of course, you will know now that what is happening. It is not possible, right? Air cannot go spontaneously inside, right? Because the air which is free everywhere, why it does not want to go inside a balloon? It, it restricts its freedom, right? And, and that freedom is basically entropy. I will come to that little bit more precisely later on. Now, what is entropy? I will come to that point, right? So, entropy is nothing but options or choices. Let us say you have more choice than she has, then you have more entropy. For example, right now you are here, some kids are outside. Who has more entropy? Outside guys, because they can move around everywhere. And now imagine, right now you are here and your brother or sister is in the house. Who has more entropy? Because at least you have seen this, right? So the point is that when you have more choices, more options, then the entropy will be higher. So, so it is called order to disorder on. Now you tell me one thing, I have a glass of water and then I boil the water and make it vapor. Which has more entropy? Water or the vapor? Huh? Sure, 100 percent. Now I will tell you, I have an ice and water. Why? Huh? Water can go anywhere. Ice if I keep it, it has to be here. Unless it melts, it cannot go. But water if you pour it, it will go everywhere. Water has more entropy than ice. Vapor has more entropy than? So you know, if I take a bowl, especially in Pune, take a bowl of water in your, in your room, balcony, you keep it. After two days, you will see there is no water in the bowl. What happened? It has gone out because it likes entropy. Everything likes entropy. Mo they want to increase it all the time. Only when they can't, somebody holds it. That means if I take the water, put it in a bottle, close the bottle and say, no, you cannot go out, then only they will be staying there, right? So that means if somebody has more option, they will always go in that direction. And that is what the entropy is. Whatever the mathematical formula, and you know who told that? This guy. His name is Ludwig Boltzmann. Single person. And how many years back? Uh, 1872 means 1972, almost like 150 years back. He came up with this idea that if something has more options, there is a formula, do not worry about it. 
if if you already know logarithm some of you may know they will know that but it doesn't matter e w is the choice and options for example i'll show you let's say i have a coin how many how many choices i have head and tail two choices right if i have a dice how many choices i have so that means entropy of the dice will be more than the coin now let's say i have one coin two coin three coin so first coin can have head and tail second coin can have head and tail third coin can have head and tail so i have so many choices so three coins will have this many choices so that has more even more entropy right so more choices means more entropy so again mixing so mixing now if i understand in terms of entropy so how do i understand it why it is mixing because the ink drop if it stays as a drop it will be in a very small place but if it gets mixed then it can go many many places similarly gas particles as you said right it was confined in one place now it has more area to go that's why it is increasing now another way to think about entropy is it is called distribution of energy for example i have a piece of paper i am not doing that experiment now but you can imagine i light that paper with a match stick what will happen it will burn like this right it will burn where is that energy is coming from match stick has very small light i just light in the corner only but rest of the paper is burning right where the energy is coming from chemical energy of the paper right it is burning and that burning that after some time what will happen it will be ashes fire will be not there it will be only ashes where this where this energy has gone everywhere everywhere in the surrounding right that means the energy that was there in the paper in a very small location now has gone to the universe that means energy has been distributed like when you take uh, let's say for example uh, a cake or a pizza or, or something and you distribute among people more people you distribute more entropy increase happens so that means energy now if you take energy and distribute it then you are increasing the entropy so energy is nothing but distribution in sorry entropy is nothing but distribution of energy this particular example so can you tell me in this particular thing you have seen the movie running backward and forward right can you tell me in this the movie is running forward or backward how many forward please raise your hand how many of you think it is forward movie meaning normal movie raise your hand one two how many you think backward raise your hand rest of you don't think anything rest of you rest of you don't know whether running forward or backward right Uh, no you have to consider only from the movie meaning uh, there is no reference you have to consider let's say for example i'll give you one more this he is my student in a jhula he is you know moving can you tell me if the movie is running forward or backward how many for forward please raise your hand how many for backward so see some of you are thinking it is forward some of you know it is backward and as he says that there is no reference correct but all other cases you could tell whether it was forward or backward right why in this case you are not being able to right but it can go to and fro but so but what why you cannot even tell then correct now to put it in other way you cannot tell you know why because entropy is not changing if entropy change would happen then you would surely know whether it is forward or backward but in this case so entropy increases 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 and beyond a certain point that means when your color got mixed with the water after that there is no change right if i take a movie you don't know whether it is forward or backward correct because entropy has reached maximum it is not changing anymore after that so that means when entropy becomes maximum and when it does not change you don't know the time you don't know whether time is moving forward or backward as in jhula or in this pendulum you don't know where the time is you are lost in the time 
there is no backward like reference no forward there is no reference so what is our reference of time see now it is 2023 28 february right at some point it was zero years and before that it was you know bc and before that there was no time and before and before and before but time was there time was progressing what was the initial point of the time initial point of the time this is a movie i'm not going to show it you can see it in uh, youtube the initial point of the movie is this point right now we are here initial point of time is the big bang because that is when the entropy was minimum and it has kept on increasing with time and you see slowly slowly atoms got created and then stars galaxies got created and universe has kept on you know being bigger and bigger and bigger and every day entropy has increased so that means when it will stop when the time will stop when entropy will become maximum right after that there will be no change in time and how do we know that that is not going to increase anymore but still increasing by the way why because it is still expanding so when there will be no scope of change which i am not going to it's a very uh, uh, you can search for it if you want you can look for it and there are very nice videos available in the youtube uh, about when the entropy of the universe will stop or what will happen when the entropy maximizes you can search for that but the point is that we are still our entropy is increasing at every time in the fact that i am talking i am spending some energy right my this sound energy is getting distributed it means the entropy is increasing every process whatever you do you talk move or don't even move the heat that is getting radiated right the infrared radiation happens you know that right because that's why you can see in infrared camera a person correct because infrared radiation is going on all the time and that radiation increases the entropy so entropy is always increasing and will keep on increasing with the universe and that's how we know the time the add that's why entropy is called the arrow of time if you know something that normally happens that means entropy is increasing and time is also increasing if you know that movie is running backward that means time is negative means entropy is also reducing right so that is how you will know whether entropy is changing or not now maybe in future you will uh, learn a lot more about it but it is just to tell you that we all of us know about energy but this is one very important quantity that is governing the basic principles of any change that happens all around us okay so now when the you know as i said when entropy maximizes time will stop okay then that, that means there is no meaning of time anymore like pendulum is going this way and that, what is the meaning of time then you don't know any reference you you have no idea where you started and where you ended right so but that is a long way to go don't worry we have just come 13.6 billion years maybe we'll go much 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 more longer okay and uh, so you don't have to worry about that right now so now the enigma is gone correct it is still enigmatic enigmatic means something that is very mystical that you don't understand do you still think that entropy is enigmatic or you think entropy is a normal thing it's just options or choices right so enigma is gone mystery remains why mystery remains what is the mystery here mystery is that why entropy increase means a favorable process we have we now know that entropy increase means it will happen but why that is a mystery and that still remains because nobody knows the answer for it only people can guess but there is no answer to that we we take it for a fact that entropy increase will be a favorable process but by the way entropy increase means entropy increase of the whole universe okay whole universe not just a small place okay with that i thank you i hope that you got some idea about entropy from this Ah, any questions you have you can ask definitely yeah good afternoon sir yeah in the boltzmann equation what does it mean by the number of microstates like how do we measure the microstates for a system so yeah, so there are many many ways uh, for doing that uh, 
I don't know which standard you are in accordingly to. 11th. 11th. So basically, uh, you can, so for, let's say you are talking about a particle. A particle at its position and its velocities. So if any particle's position or velocity changes, it creates a new microstate. So that means I have four, five particle. If one particle moves a little bit, that, that creates a new microstate. So that would create many microstates. Exactly. So how do we calculate that? Like so for that, what we use is we use a very different approach. We use something called some probabilistic approach for that. And when you study statistical thermodynamics, you will get answer to those questions. Those are very important questions, but you will have to go through statistical thermodynamics and I, it will take me a long time to answer that question. Okay. Yes, there are many, but we can still handle that. I can tell you that. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Sir, as you say that entropy always increases uh, if you not work down on a system. If I take my bottle and go to the Siberia, so my liquid water became freezes and became ice. So it's still in. Uh, in so how did it freeze? Uh, how, heat has to go somewhere. Yeah. Otherwise, it will not freeze, right? Yeah. When the heat goes out, entropy increases. Uh, so see, there is a system and there is surrounding. One will reduce the entropy, another will increase the entropy. But when you combine them together, there will be an increase all the time. Sir, as we see that uh, time is uh, not constant for all times uh, because of near the black holes, it may be time dilation. So, is uh, something uh, of entropy means entropy dilation or something like that? See, the thing is that the entropy calculation of black hole, black hole is very different compared to entropy calculation of uh, here. Essentially, for black holes also, depending on the mass of the black hole, the entropy will uh, change. So, larger the black hole, larger the entropy. So, but entropy dilation that you mean, that does not come into the picture. That means we do not calculate how much time it takes to increase the entropy. We only look at final and initial and final point in order for the calculation. Yeah. You can ask, no, I can hear. So, uh, I have to understand entropy at the state of noise. That's why energy transfer takes place. The objective is to go to a place where the energy is least. Energy is least. Huh. That's why it goes to transform to energy. In this context, for example, particle behaving as waves, sometimes particles, either a photon behave as particle or a waves. How do I explain in terms of? See that the the photon uh, thing uh, that is quantum mechanical in nature, right? The photon behaving as a particle or a wave. See, that happens even at t equal to 0, absolute 0 Kelvin, when there is no entropy. So, entropy that we understand is in classical terms. That means when there is a finite temperature present. But for particle, for electron, also for photon, they both behave as particle or wave. That is totally quantum phenomena and people do not understand why they behave that way. That means the interference that happens in electrons or in photons, people do not know why they happen. Yes, because see without equilibrium we can, I did not say that we are talking about thermodynamics. So thermodynamics cannot stand without it being an equilibrium. Sir, what do you think of the word entropy? What uh, do we? What do you think of the word entropy? It is a Greek origin word which uh -huh. means transformation. Yes, yes. But uh, is it poor choice? See the Clausius, oh, uh, whether the choice is poor choice or not? Yeah. See that when the Clausius got it right, he did not uh, get any, like, the way he did, did it from Carnot cycle and all, he saw that some quantity is get, getting conserved right. for the whole process. And that is how he came to the name because he was working on heat transfer only. He just stumbled upon it, this particular aspect that there is something called entropy like this. So, so that is why he put that name and somehow the name has you know some kind of a charm, right? It, it remains. But what is in a name? You know that, that is what also the thing, right? See whatever you know you call a rose by whatever name it still remains a rose, right? So for that, uh, yeah, I have not thought about the name aspect of it but, but sounds rings good because it also rings well with the energy, you see energy entropy. Yeah, because they are like, you know, different facets of the same thing. Yeah, so the thing is that time, the way, why do we say it is time? Because there is a change happening from now 
to later. That's why it's time. That means it is connected to expansion of the universe, right? We know that when things reach equilibrium, entropy maximizes for that process. If our process is expansion of universe, so then it will stop when universe maximizes or entropy maximizes for the universe, which means that right now the temperature is 2.7 Kelvin. It started with 10 to the power 31 Kelvin galaxies created and all that, we still have lot of energy stored in local places. For example, chair tables, human beings, all are stores of energy. They will all dissipate. Then there will be energy in atoms, in the nuclei, they will all dissipate. And then there will be no longer, no structure available and heat also has to cool down because that will increase the entropy. So basically at the end, there will be no structure, nothing. It will be very cold, zero Kelvin heat bath. And then there will be no change after that. See, if there is no change, then there is no meaning of time. Correct. Only when there is a change, let's say you are sitting in a place in a very cold, dark room, or not cold, forget about the cold part, dark room where you cannot see anything. Has time any meaning for you? Because there is no change. If there is no change, no time. So that's what I mean. The time will stop. Because that notion of time comes from the change only. If, if you do not change with time, then there is no time. You see, it is like eternity, remains the same hmm? in that context. Okay, any other question? Okay, thanks. Uh, so, with this, I thank you very much, Adla.